Now that we have vector addition, scalar multiplication, and some of the properties under our belt, the next logical thing to learn is how we can apply these and where do these, uh, you know, these two topics help us and, you know, how can we bridge them together? So, you know, that's what linear combinations are. But before I start talking about linear combinations, let's quickly, just quickly review what we have already learned. Now, in the past few videos, we have talked about the vector. So, you know, some properties, we talked about commutativity, associativity, and distributivity. And there are more. And if you want to practice just for maybe you, you know, maybe you want to practice more the, with the, with the proofs, you can attempt to prove how taking one scalar and multiplying that with the scalar, another different scalar with a vector is the same thing as me just multiplying the scalars together and then multiplying that with the vector. So, you know, that could be for practice and, you know, the technique that I would use. And if you don't want to hear me, just pause the video. Um, however, the technique that I would use to prove this would be the left hand side, the left hand side equal to ra right hand side um, the proof uh, strategy. So, you know, that's what I would use. And, you know, there are other ways. However, that's the simplest and best way to best way to prove this. One thing that I always get asked is that so far we have been working with a vector V that has components A and B. So this vector is an element of the real two. So what this means is it's a it's a tuple, and you know I don't I don't want to get into that because uh, you know tuples get to and you know tend to confuse my students. So I'm just going to work with very abstract terminology. So we are in R two. All all you really need to know is that we are working in a world where every single point is defined by two two different coordinates. That's one way to. Uh, say this, maybe, maybe it's a little bit mathematically illegal. However, that's how I think about it. So, you know, if I bring a vector C and maybe it has components that go from X sub one, X sub two, and all the way to X sub N, then I would say that this vector is an element of R N. And a, a lot of students get confused with, with this R N. That's just how we, you know, that, that's just how we denote some nth some nth coordinate. If if I would choose O here, then O, O, and, you know, then I would have to be working in R, O. You know, that, that variable, all, all that tells you is where you stop. Or another way to think about it is that if I have, you know, X sub 1, X sub 2, and X sub 3, what is this? You just look at the last number, that's where you are working, and this would be an element of R3. Very simple. Finally, the, the the last thing that we talked about was lengths. So, you know, how do we get the length of maybe the vector C? So we draw two lines and, and we put our vector name and then we draw two lines again. So how I said was it's an absolute value in another absolute value. So that inner, so basically two lines, that's what you show. And maybe some people would call it norm. So this would be equal to the square root, square root of each of the components squared. So it would be x sub 1 squared plus x sub 2 squared plus x sub 3 squared all the way to x sub n uh, squared. So you think to yourself, well, you know, this is my c and it comes from, you know, Pythagoras' theorem, c equals to the a square root of a squared plus b squared and you know, you, you already know that. Chances are that you know that if, if you are in linear algebra. And maybe if you are a younger student just, you know, binge watching this, this theory, then, you know, then the, 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 we, Pythagorean theorem is the crux of, of mathematics and it's so important and it sometimes still to this day shocks me, uh, where, where randomly, um, helps, uh, helps us understand different portions of math. It's very, very important. And it's, it's one of my favorite, it's one of my favorite formulas other than I have some other favorites such as the Euler's identity and we will talk about that in a diff in a different video. However, however, you are here to listen to me and uh, I talk about linear combinations. So I'm going to try to make it as simple as possible for you. I know linear combinations can be hard to understand and you know my duty as, uh, as your tutor is to, uh, you know, to make it as simple as possible. So when we talk about linear 
combinations. What are we talking about? We're talking about a combination which is linear. So that's not the definition. I'm not going to use a word to define the original word. I'm going to give you an analogy. Combination. Let's just look at this word for a second. Combination. When you wear a shirt and you wear um, maybe jeans that go with it, people that are close to you, your friends, your parents might tell you, wow, you, you know, that's a, that's a nice combination. Maybe you wore a red, a red shirt with, with some blue jeans. So, you know, maybe that looks nice on you and they say, wow, that's a nice combination. Now, you, we as linear algebra students, what we will be doing is we will be combining two things that we have already learned. And, you know, the only things that you should already know are our vector addition. So V dot A vector addition and, and scalar multiplication S dot M dot. These are the two things that we already know. So, you know, it would make sense for us to just combine these. What, what happens if, if I combine this? So we'll talk about that in just a second. So let me just write that to you. So using this analogy, we will be working with combining vector, vector addition, vector addition with, with scalar multiplication. So, once we understand this, let's quickly talk about why we call it a linear combination. It's linear because maybe you, chances are that you have worked with quadratic functions and recall that those are maybe 0 equals 5x squared plus 3x plus 2. So, so the only linear part in, in this would be would be maybe this and maybe even this. This is not linear. This would not be linear. The reason why this is not linear, it's because you're squaring it. You, we in linear algebra, the, the reason why it's called linear, it's is is because we are not allowed to work with squared or cubed or four or you know I, I think it's called quartic functions. It's it's just simple functions with with just simple uh, you know some sort of uh, variable and some sort of number and we will uh, dive deeper into this when we talk about systems of linear equations however for now you are here to learn about linear combinations so let's just go through what we have talked about vector addition okay to make it really really abstract what does it mean to be you know adding vectors well well, you know, the adding vectors would just be, okay, so if I take a vector and maybe I call it vector v sub 1, then I just add it to another vector, v sub 2. And, you know, maybe, for, maybe I keep going, maybe for some reason I just keep going, maybe I stop at v, v, the vector v sub 3. So, as of this moment, you know, what this means is, well, I'm just adding vectors. We have taken care of one part of what we wanted to talk about. Now, a very logical thing, and maybe, you know, maybe I should put them together so you can clearly see what I will be doing. What we're trying to put together is vector addition with scalar multiplication. So, let's just add these two, these three, these three vectors. So once we do that, we take care of the first part that we wanted to take care of. Then let's just multiply this addition of vectors with a scalar. Okay, let's, let me call that R, R, and, and, you know, and, and then clearly we have taken care of one part of, of whatever we were trying to combine. And now using the distributivity, uh, law. Let me let me give this in. So you know, I will end up with something that looks like r times times vector v sub one, and then we add this to vec uh, you know s uh, scalar r times vector uh, v sub two, and then we add this to we add this to r r times vector v vector v sub 3 and maybe for some reason you you think it's the same r now one thing that i want to clear for this is 
this was just an analogy. This was just to, you know, maybe normalize, um, you know, maybe make it a little bit more normal for you to see where might this be coming from. However, one thing that I want to be very, very clear about, and let's, let's do that right here, is that it's not the same it's not the same coefficient for every term. So this top part is just for remembering. Don't put this to, you know, don't, don't remember this. Don't, don't remember linear combinations using the top part. And for the bottom part, you have to assign different, you know, the, 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 uh, subscripts. So R1 times vector V sub 1. The R2 times vector uh, V sub 2. R3 times vector v sub 3 because we don't really know if it's the same coefficient it could be the same coefficient there there are cases where a r sub 1 is equal to r sub 2 and which is equal to r sub 3 there are those those cases do exist however what i want to be really really clear about is that these would be different and what i did above was just you know using just the word that the that the title has and you know i just did what we thought uh, you know it it would have now one thing that i want to tell you is that this is just what does this mean this in itself would be a vector why why would this be a vector because think about this think about this this has maybe two dimensions maybe that's a and b and this has its own dimensions maybe that's c and d this has its own dimensions so a b c d and then e and f now, what we're basically doing is we're multiplying this by R1, this by R1, and then we're multiplying this by R2, this by R2, and then we're, and then we're multiplying this by R3, and then this by R3. And then what we're doing is we're just adding all of them, okay? And one thing that you know about it, you know, adding is that you just don't, you know, for, for vector addition, you don't just add, you add in the specific compartments using the bin method that we talked about. So, you know, this would be, be deleted and this would be deleted as well. This would be taken care of and that would be also taken care of. So what you would basically have, what you would basically have is this vector which which has uh, you know r r sub 1 times a plus r sub 2 times c plus r sub 3 times e and then down low it would have r sub 1 times b added to r sub 2 times d plus r sub 3 times f so what dimension is this? You can think of this as just one number because it is just one number. So you would say, well, okay, it has one, one dimension, of course, and then it has another dimension. So this would be an element of R2. Now, one thing that you want to be really clear about is when you see three things, it doesn't mean that you are working in R3 because this R depends on the vectors and skaters just go with all of the components of the of these vectors so if this vector is in rn then then this whole thing would have to be in rn for this to be consistent or for this to be actually valid because you can't be adding vectors that have different dimensions so what i'm trying to say is that this would be called a linear combination because we are taking scalars and multiplying them with the vectors and we're just adding this and we're just adding this and so this would be an example of of linear combinations and maybe this is an rn this is just a general way of writing it and i guess i could keep going i, I could make it even more general i could say r sub 1 times v sub 1 and and plus r sub 2 times vector v sub 2 plus r 3 times vector v sub 3 and then we keep going all the way to maybe r sub n times vector v sub n and again me writing this the end doesn't mean it it you know that's not the reason why this would be an element of rn the, you know the reason or why we would be working in rn it would totally depends on the vector if this vector maybe vector 3 has has x sub 1 x sub 2 all the way to x sub n so i really want to emphasize that specific point because that's what that's what's important Let's do an example and so that you under so that you understand. Maybe they tell you, okay, write a linear combination where your vector v sub one is equal 
to 5, 1, and 2, and then also using vector uh, v sub 2, which is equal to negative 1, 2, and then negative 1. And then you also use r sub 1 is equal to negative 2, and then r sub 2 is equal to 4. How would you write the linear combination of this? It's very, very simple. You just you do exactly what we did. We you associate this sub one with this sub one, so these would go together and multiply together, and this sub two, so this two and this two would also work together, and you just add them. You add the scalar multiplication. Maybe you hear the combination part when I speak, because you're first you're multiplying it, you're scaling it, and then you are adding it. And you know, maybe I should go and go back and really emphasize what I did before when I did this. When I did this, and when I said, well, we could just do this, this is a good tool to remember how linear combination works, or at least one way to do it. Or, you know, this is how I think about it. If I ever forget about it, I just think what it means to add vectors, and then I just multiply by a scalar because it's scalar multiplication. However, please be sure of not doing this because this would be wrong. This is completely 100% wrong. Um, I guess it could be okay if, if R sub one and R sub two and R sub three are equal. However, you don't wanna get into the habit of that. Again, this is just one tool to remember it. Some students, after I teach it to them, they, they just remember this. However, please, please be sure to, to give you know, the specific uh, subscripts to every single scalar multiple of, of, of each term. So for this, we would have R1 times V1 and plus R2 times V2. This is a linear combination given the, given the information that we have. So we use this. So R1 would be negative two. V1 is this. So five, one, two. We add this to we add this to R two R two is four and which is being multiplied with V two V two is that so it's negative one two negative one. Once you have this, you can give this a scalar to all of the components of each of these vectors. So that would be equal to negative negative two times five then negative two times one negative two times two and you add this and you add this to four times negative one, then four times two, and then four times times negative one, times negative one, and then you just, I guess you could also do it independently and then add them, or how I, or well, how some people do it is, um, they just take, you know, just rewrite it with, so I'm, I'm running out of space, that's why I'm just erasing a bracket, however you are supposed to rewrite it, and they just, and they just do this, so, so, and then you would have to assign the plus sign for all of them. So plus, plus, plus. This would be something that I would have written there, but I don't have space. So this would be negative, negative 10. So you would have negative 10, and then plus negative four, so minus four. So negative two, negative two, plus eight. Negative four, plus, so that's a plus times plus negative, so minus four. So what you have is a negative 14, and then you have eight minus two is six, and then we have negative eight. So that would be your linear combination with, with the vectors given to us. So one thing that I wanna, one, one piece of terminology is that, you know, given that we have, so maybe W is a, you know, the collection or the result of the linear combination of vectors v sub 1 and v sub 2. So that would be r sub 1 times v sub 1 plus r sub 2 times v sub 2. So one piece of terminology is that in the linear combination of v sub, so th th this is how we read this. This would be the linear combination of, of v sub 1 and v sub 2. That's how we read this. This statement is read this, so w, is the linear, so L dot C, the linear combination of vectors one and vector two. That's how we read this. Here, R sub one and R sub two are called the coordinates of the vector V or, or the vector W. So I should probably put an arrow. Sorry, I forgot that because this is still a vector. It doesn't become a scalar. So 
R sub 1 and R sub 2 are called the coordinates. These, so R sub 1 and R sub 2 are called, are the coordinates. Coordinates, coordinates of the vector W with respect to, with respect to vectors 1 and vector 2. This is very important. Make sure you know this. So again, R, R sub 1 and R sub 2 are called the coordinates of vector W with respect to vector 1 and vector 2. This is important. In the So, you know, that's all I had to really tell you about the linear combinations. This will get harder. However, that's all you really needed to know for the initial part. They just give you a bunch of vectors and then you put coordinates uh, in front of them, which are r sub 1, r sub 2, and then add together that makes one linear combination. And that's what our w, our vector w is denoting. Um, that's all I had to say for this video. I really hope that this video was helpful. And in the next video, I will teach you what the standard vectors uh, in, in Rn uh, are and what they look like. So I will see you in the next video.